there and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will be talking about some of the soft items of the sets and other scholarship examinations. But before proceeding to this video, let me congratulate you for taking one leap forward. Admit it or not, reviewing boosts our confidence that we may have greater chances of passing. The items reflected in this video were patterned in different admission and scholarship tests in order to simulate the actual exams you are about to encounter. Through this video tutorial, I hope that you may have better chances of being one of the so-called scholars. Always remember that constant practice and thorough analysis of the errors you have committed will equip you with the knowledge and skills needed for you to reach your goals of conquering the admission and scholarship examinations. Now, are you ready? Prepare your pen and paper with you so that you can solve the given problems. So that you will be used to answering under pressure, every question is given 15 seconds to answer. You may also pause this video tutorial if you need more time. An explanation of the solution is given after the question. Alright, let's get started. Question number one. Suppose the set A, which consists of the elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, while well set B consists of 1, 4, 9, and 16. Then, A intersection B is equal to letter A, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 16. Letter B, 4. Letter C, an empty set or a null set. Letter D, 4, and 16. You have 15 seconds to answer. Alright, time is up. Let's try to find out if your answer is correct. Take note that this symbol represents intersection. And by definition, intersection is the set containing all elements of A that also belong to B. That means to say, these are the elements that are both present in A and B. With a given, we are given with set A with the elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, and set B, which consists of the elements 1, 4, 9, and 16. Now, we are looking for the intersection or the elements that are common to both A and B, and this is 4. Therefore, A intersection B is equal to 4. Let's now proceed to question number two. Find the number of terms in the series 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, until 6,286 and 6,293. Letter A, 897. Letter B, 898. Letter C, 899 and letter D 6279 All right. Let's try to find out the correct answer. First thing to do is to identify the first term, the second term, and the last term of the sequence. After that is to subtract the first term from the second term to get the common difference. And in this case, we have the second term which is 21 minus the first term 14 which is equal to 7. And 7 is our common difference. 
After getting the common difference, substitute in the formula T sub n, which is equal to A, plus the quantity of n minus 1, multiply it to D, where T sub n is the last term of the sequence, A is the first term of the sequence, while D is the common difference. Substituting it with the result, we have the last term, which is 6,293, which is equal to A, and that is equal to the first term, which is 14, plus the quantity of n minus 1 times 7, which is our common difference. Next thing to do is to transpose 14. So this will become 6,293 minus 14 is equal to the quantity of n minus 1 times 7. Subtracting 6,293 minus 14, the result will be 6,279, which is equal to n minus 1 multiplied to 7. Dividing both sides by 7, we can cancel 7 here and solving 6,279 by 7. That would give us a result of 897, which is equal to n minus 1. Now, we will transpose minus 1 to the other side to get the value of n. So this will become 897 plus 1 equals n. Therefore, n is equal to 898. So we have 898 turns of the given sequence. Aside from solving that one, you can also solve it this way. n is equal to the last term minus the first term all over the common difference plus 1. Take note that you can only use this one if this is an arithmetic sequence. And how do you know if it is an arithmetic sequence? By simply looking at the given, you will try to look at if there is a common difference. You can have a given number minus the previous number. For example, when you subtract 21 minus 14, you can get 7. 28 minus 21, it's also 7. 35 minus 28, it's 7. 42 minus 35, it's 7. So there is a pattern and that we call that one as the common difference. Alright. Substituting it in the given formula, we have the last term which is 6,293 minus the first term which is 14 all over the common difference which is 7 plus 1. Solving 6,293 minus 14 it gives us an answer of 6,279 all over 7 plus 1. Solving 6,279 divided by 7, that is equal to 897 plus 1. And it will give us an answer of 898. So 898 terms in the given series. Alright, let's now proceed to question number 3. The point with coordinates negative 5, 3 is in what quadrant? Letter A, quadrant 1. Letter B, quadrant 2. Letter C, quadrant 3. Or letter D, quadrant 4. Let's try to compare your answers if your answer is correct. Alright. The rectangular coordinate plane consists of two number lines that intersect at a right angle. The horizontal number line is called the x-axis and the vertical number line is called the y-axis. The intersection of the two axes 
is known as the origin which corresponds to the point zero, 0. The x and y axis break the plane into four regions and we call them quadrants. In quadrant 1, both coordinates are positive. In quadrant 2, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive. In quadrant 3, both coordinates are negative. And in quadrant 4, the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is negative. So based on the given, we have negative 5 and 3, where negative 5 is our x coordinate and positive 3 is our y coordinate. Hence, this point is found in quadrant 2. So the answer is letter B, quadrant 2. Alright, question number 4. If f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1, find f of negative 1. Letter A, 4. Letter B, 9. Letter C, 0. Letter D, 1 fourth. Alright, time is up. Let's try to solve the given equation. We have f of x which is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1 and we are asked to find f of negative 1. We just simply substitute x with a given negative 1. So we have here f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. So f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared which is equal to 1 plus 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2 plus 1. So f of negative 1 is equal to 1 plus 1, 2 plus negative 2. So f of negative 1 is equal to 0. Question number 5. Find the domain of the function described by the equation g of x is equal to x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. Letter A. The domain is all real numbers. Letter B. We have 0. A negative one third. Letter C, we have negative two to positive infinity. And letter D, we have negative infinity and negative three halves union with negative three halves to positive infinity. All right, let's try to solve this problem. Important rules or important things to remember in getting the domain. Number one, a denominator cannot be zero because the resulting expression would become undefined. Second, the radicand under the square root sign must be greater than or equal to zero because the square root of a negative number is not a real number or simply does not exist. All right. So the given applies with rule number one, since the given is a fraction, and we have a variable under the denominator. So let's try to find out what are the numbers or what are the values of x that would make the denominator equal to zero. Or at what value of x will the denominator be equal to zero? So we will equate 2x plus 3 equal to 0 and solve for x. So this will become 2x which is equal to transposing positive 3 to the other side it will become negative 3. Divide both sides by 2. Cancel 2. 
So we have x is equal to negative 3 halves. Take note that this negative 3 halves is the value of x that will make the denominator 0. And we need to avoid that one in order for the expression not to become undefined. So we have here the domain of the function is the set of real numbers except negative 3 halves. Again, the domain of the function is the set of all real numbers except negative 3 halves. Why except negative 3 halves? Because it will make the denominator equal to 0. And once the denominator is 0, it will make the whole expression become undefined. So, using the interval notation, we can write the answer as negative infinity, comma, negative 3 halves, in union with negative 3 halves, comma, to positive infinity. The negative infinity and positive infinity symbolizes that the numbers or the sets of values of x would extend to the negative infinity to the positive infinity, except with negative 3 halves. We use the union symbol between these two intervals because we are removing the point negative 3 halves. The parenthesis or the open interval indicates the exclusion of a point. It means a point is not included. So except negative Three halves. You can also write this one using the set builder notation, which is equal to x such that x is not equal to negative three halves. So we have here again x such that that's the bar line such that x must not be equal to negative three halves. So there are two ways of writing. It could be in the interval notation or the set builder notation. And the correct answer is letter B. Question number six. Find the domain of the function described by the equation f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Letter A. 1 to positive infinity. Letter B. 1 to positive infinity. But take note. In letter A, 1 is excluded, represented by the open interval interval or the parenthesis. Meanwhile, in letter B, is already a bracket which denotes that 1 is included. Letter C, negative infinity to 1. Letter D, negative infinity to 1. Alright, let's try to solve this one. Solving the given equation, we have f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. This applies rule number 2 which states that the radicand under the square root sign must be greater than or equal to 0 because the square root of a negative number is not a real number. So we have here x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 as stated in rule number 2. Transposing minus 1 to the other side, this will become x, which is greater than or equal to positive 1. That means to say, all the values of x must be equal to 1 or greater than 1 to the positive infinity. Meaning to say, with the bracket sign here, 1 is included from 1 to the positive infinity. So the correct answer is letter B. Take note and always remember that whenever the given is a parenthesis, it denotes an open interval, which means to say that we do not include the endpoints or the number given. But if ever it is a bracket sign, this is a closed interval, which means to say we do include or we will include the endpoints given. Question number seven. Determine the slope of the line that passes through the points 
negative 1, 3, and 1, 6. Letter A, 2. Letter B, 3 halves. Letter C, 0. Letter D, negative 1 third. Alright, time is up. Let's try to proceed and solve this given problem. Based on the given problem, we let negative 1 and 3 as our point 1 and 1, 6 as our point 2. In here, in point 1, negative 1 will be the x sub 1, 3 will be the y sub 1, 1 will be the x sub 2 in point 2, and 6 will be the y sub 2. We will use the formula of the slope which is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Substituting it in the given formula, we have y sub 2 which is equal to 6 minus y sub 1 which is 3 all over x sub 2 which is 1 minus x sub 1 which is negative 1. Solving, 6 minus 3 is equal to 3 all over 1 minus negative 1, which is 2. So the slope of the given point here, points negative 1, 3, and 1, 6 will be equal to the slope of 3 halves. Question number 8. Determine the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment from A with points 5 and negative 3 to point B we have 1 and negative 6. Letter A, 3 and negative 9 halves. Letter B, 3 and 2. Letter C, 3 and negative 3 halves. And letter D, 4 and 3. Time is up. Based on the given, we have point A, which is equal to 5 and negative 3, to point B, which is 1 and negative 6. The 5 here will be our x sub 1, negative 3 will be our y sub 1, while in point B, our 1 will be x sub 2, and negative 6 will be our y sub 2. Substituting it in the formula for the midpoint, we have x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over 2, and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. 2. Substituting it in the formula, we have our x sub 1 is 5 plus x sub 2 which is 1 all over 2 and our y sub 1 is negative 3 plus our y sub 2 which is negative 6 all over 2. Solving 5 plus 1 that is equal to 6 over 2 and negative 3 plus negative 6 that is equal to negative 9 over 2. Reducing 6 over 2 we come up with an answer of 3 and negative 9 halves. Question number 9. If 3 fourth of a number is 33 more than 1 fifth of itself, then what is the number? Letter A, 60. Letter B, 660. Letter C, 165. And letter D, 3. Alright, time is up. In the given, if 3 fourth of a number is 33 more than 1 fifth of itself, then what is the number? We let x be the number. So based on the given, we have 3 fourth of a number, that is 3 fourth x, is, that means to say, or that would represent the equal sign, 33 more than one fifth of itself, that would be one fifth x plus 33, or 33 plus one fifth x. Solving this one, we can transpose or combine like terms, transpose one fifth x to the other side. This will become three fourth x minus 
1 fifth x which is equal to 33. Then we will get the LCD or the least common denominator of 4 and 5 and that is 20. We will multiply it by 20. So 20 times 3 that's 60 over 4x minus 20 times 1 that's 20 over 5x which is equal to 33 times 20 that is 616. Solving 60 over 4, that is equal to 15x minus 20 over 5x, that is 4x, equals 616. 15x minus 4x, that would give us a result of 11x, which is equal to 660. Dividing both sides by 11, we can cancel 11. So we have here the remaining x is equal to 660 divided by 11, that is equal to 16. Question number 10. Find the x and the y intercepts of the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 5. Letter A, x is equal to 5 halves and y equals negative 5. Letter B, x is equal to negative 5 halves and y is equal to 5. Letter C, x is equal to 2 fifth and y is equal to 5. Letter D, x is equal to 5 halves and y is equal to 2 fifth. If you need some time to solve, you can pause this video. Alright, when we solve this one, we have here f of x is equal to 2x minus 5. Take note that f of x is equal to y. And to solve for the value of the x-intercept, we let y equal 0. To solve for the y-intercept, we let x equals 0. So we have here, again, f of x and y, they are just the same. To solve for y, to solve for the y-intercept, we let x equals 0. So this will become y equals 2 times 0 minus 5. Therefore, y is equal to 0 minus 5 that is equal to negative 5. So the y-intercept is 5. Meanwhile, to solve for the x-intercept, we let y equals to 0. So we have here 0 equals 2x minus 5. Transposing minus 5 to the other side, this will become 5, positive 5 already because we transpose it to the other side from negative, it will become positive, positive 5 which is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, we can cancel 2 there, so that is x is equal to 5 halves. Question number 11. Find the vertex of the parabola y squared is equal to 12x. Letter A. V or the vertex is equal to 0, 0 or at the origin. Letter B. The vertex is at negative 3, 0. Letter C. The vertex is at 0, positive 3. And letter D. The vertex will be at the negative 3, and positive 3. Solving the given problem, we will recall the general equation of the parabola, which is the quantity of y minus k squared equals 4p times the quantity of x minus h where h and k is the vertex of the parabola. With the given equation y squared equals 12x, we can transform this equation to the general equation of the parabola with this one. y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h, and the y squared equals 12x would be equal to 
y minus 0 squared equals 4 times 3 times x minus 0. So we have here our h is equal to 0 and our y is equal to 0. I mean our k is equal to 0. Therefore, the vertex of the parabola is at the origin which is at 0, 0. So the correct answer is letter A. Question number 12. What is the sixth root of 27? Letter A, 3. Letter B, 1 over the square root of 3. Letter C, 1 third. And letter D, square root of 3. All right, time is up. So we have here to give in the sixth root of 27. We can change this one with 27 raised to the power of 1, 6. We can also transform 27 with 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 1, 6. So 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 27. So we transform 27 to 3 to the power of 3. So simplifying the exponent, we have 3 to the power of 3 times 1, 6. We have 3 over 6, which is equal to 3 to the power of 1 half. Reducing 3 over 6, that will become 1 half. And the 1 half would be the square root of 3. So the square root of sign, the square root sign here represents the exponent which is 1 half. Therefore, the 6th root of 27 is equal to square root of 3 and that is letter B. Question number 13. In an isosceles right triangle, one angle can be letter A, 30 degrees. Letter B, 45 degrees. Letter C, 50 degrees. Letter D, 60 degrees. Alright, time is up. Solving the given problem, we have an isosceles right triangle. And by definition, an isosceles right triangle is a right triangle with the two legs and their corresponding angles are equal. So based on the definition, we have x plus x because there are two legs as well as corresponding angles which are equal plus 90 because it is a right triangle which is equal to 180 and that is the total sum of a triangle. Solving x plus x that is equal to 2x, transposing 90 to the other side, it will become 180 minus 90. Solving that one, that would be equal to 2x equals 180 minus 90, and that is 90. Dividing both sides by 2, so we have here x is equal to 45. Question number 14. Mary, Marie, Maria, Marinelle, and Marielle are sitting on a round table when they thought of exchanging seats and count all possible arrangements they can do. How many arrangements would they count in the end? Letter A, 120. Letter B, 24. Letter C, 60. And letter D, 5. Time is up. Solving the given problem, you can observe that that is an example of a circular permutation because they are sitting on a round table with the formula n minus 1 factorial. And we have 
we have Mary, Marie, Maria, Marinel, and Marielle. So there are five person or five people who are sitting in a round table. Substituting it at the given formula, we have n minus 1 factorial. Substituting 5 to n, we have 5 minus 1 factorial that is equal to 4 factorial or 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 which is equal to 24. And we have question number 15. What is the distance of these two endpoints? We have 3, negative 2 and negative 3, negative 2. Letter A, 3.5. Letter B, 0. Letter C, 6. Letter D, 6 over 4. All right, time is up. Since the given problem is asking for the distance between the two points, we will be using the distance formula. And that is equal to P, which is equal to the square root of the square of the quantity of x sub 2 minus x sub 1, plus the square of the quantity of y sub 2 minus y sub 1. In the given problem, we are given with the points 3, negative 2 and negative 3, negative 2 where 3 is our x sub 1, negative 2 is our y sub 1, negative 3 is our x sub 2, and negative 2 is the y sub 2. Substituting it in the distance formula, that would be equal to the square root of negative 3 minus 3 squared plus the square of negative 2 minus negative 2. Solving that one, negative 3 minus 3, that is equal to negative 6 squared, plus negative 2 minus negative 2, it will become negative 2 plus 2 that is equal to 0 squared. So we have here negative 6 squared that is equal to 36 plus 0 squared which is equal to 0 still. So we have here square root of 36 and d is equal to 6. That's it for now. I hope you learned something from this video. I wish you good luck for your upcoming sets and other scholarship examinations. I hope you will ease the test. And if you are new to this YouTube channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for more updates and video tutorial like this. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.